may have seen just a moment ago. I'm joined now by Graham Stewart, who's the Minister for Climate. A very good morning. Thanks so much for coming in. So, one story really dominating the front pages of the papers there, those warnings from National Grid. Do we have to accept that we need to brace ourselves for blackouts this winter? Well, the National Grid published its report, as it does every year, uh, yesterday, and it looks at uh, various scenarios, in, you know, including the, the more extreme ones. Um, the good news, Anna, is that they've said on their sort of central scenarios that we're in a pretty good position compared to our uh, other European neighbours. We're not dependent on Russian gas. We have nearly, nearly half our gas is produced domestically. Um, we have uh, solid and reliable suppliers like Norway, um, and we have the second largest LNG, liquid net national natural gas um, infrastructure in Europe. So we're actually well positioned, but given uh, the illegal and appalling war in Ukraine, given the pressures uh, on our European neighbours with whom we have interconnectors and interdependence, uh, then they've looked at you know, all options. They've said it's very unlikely um, that there would be uh, blackouts, but we, as a government and working with Ofgem and National Grid, we do everything possible to plan for all eventualities. And, uh, you know, given the war in Ukraine and Russia's appalling aggression, um, this winter uh, is has higher risks than we've seen in previous winters. But I wouldn't want to extend it more than that. So was Liz Truss a bit rash in saying there'd be no rationing when she was campaigning for the leadership? Oh, well, what she said is that, that, that you, you, um, you can't... I, mean, I thought you were going to refer to the blackouts question, and which is you can't guarantee what's going to happen. In terms of the nature of our energy supply, it's different from many of our European neighbours. Because we've got such a set of diverse uh, supplies, um, we're not in the same position as being reliant on storage, without which we wouldn't be able to get through. And therefore, you, that's why, you know, when you look at things like energy efficiency and the messages to the public, okay. that's why Ofgem are talking to uh, big... Uh, users, commercial users, as well as, as I think your story mentioned, those with uh, 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 with the technology but, but, but to be able to get scenario, help and reduce But worst-case scenario, we could it. be looking at rationing, planned blackouts, we could be looking at rationing. Um, uh, we don't expect that to occur. That's not our expectation at all. Um, but, we, you know, you've seen all sorts of things happening in uh, recent weeks and, uh, you know, we, we plan for all eventualities and the public should be confident that we have a very strong and diverse uh, supply, that we've taken all the steps to look after our needs for this winter. And we're also, of course, um, uh, taking, and the Prime Minister's been you know, really focused on this, is making sure that we, uh, we aren't in as vulnerable position ever again in future. OK, so we can't rule out rationing. Sh should, we, should we all be trying to use less energy? Uh, we're not uh, sending that out as a message. There's, uh, all of us have bills, of course, and the bills have gone up. It's been I mean, one of the biggest steps and one of the boldest um, and most effective steps taken by the Prime Minister has been to step in and protect families and businesses from the rising costs, um, uh, you know, in families' case, for the next two years. And so, whereas, uh, you know, there was talk that some people might be paying more than £6,000 for their energy, the average family, because what we're doing is intervening at the sort of unit uh, of energy uh, point, the average family on average use would not expect okay. to be paying more than two and a half thousand pounds a year so that's 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 meant that uh, jobs as well as uh, family finances are protected yeah so the energy support scheme obviously welcomed by a lot of people but why aren't you advising people to use less energy isn't that eminently sensible i mean we re read this week that the business secretary signed off on a public information a campaign to encourage people to save energy but that was rejected by number 10. No, we're in, i mean the way we make um, policy is where it's all we look at all the options, um, including. But you know, why, why whether, would that be rejected? Well, but the nature of our energy system is different. So if you, if you, I, I, there are good reasons why people might want to, uh, you know, uh, take a shower rather than a bath if, because it cuts their energy bills. Um, most of the time, except in peak, because of the nature of our energy system, it doesn't make any difference to our energy security. That's different in Germany. It's different in Holland. But I'm not talking about um, Europe. I'm talking about this country. Exactly. And, and so, we understand. Tell me if I'm wrong, that the business secretary signed off on a public information campaign to encourage people to save energy, which would also mean they'd save money, of course, as well, wouldn't it? But it was rejected by number 10. Can, can you confirm that? Uh, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't recognise that. We're, we're in an iterative process of policy development and ideas, and we come to a conclusion. So the idea, you know, there was some highly developed campaign, which we were... I'm, 
you know, the climate and energy minister, passionately devoted to, and number 10 nixed it. I don't recognise that. Uh, I don't think that's the, the way it was. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's about getting the right messaging from the right partners, and you'll find through um, Ofgem and through the gov.uk website, there is advice for people on how they can save, save on their um, family finances. But the last thing you want to do is tell someone, you know, to switch things off for the national need when it makes no difference um, to the national security position. So that's why you've got to, you've got to look at these things in, in the round and make sure you get the messages in the most nuanced and subtle and effective way possible. So even though we get warnings from the national grid, albeit in the worst case scenario that there could be planned blackouts, you still don't think it's worth telling people how they might be able to save energy, which incidentally will save them money too? No, well, you're, you're absolutely right, Anna. The, 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 when what they try to get is if there were such a scenario, it would come at a, at a very sharp point. So the fact that somebody hadn't, um, you know, had reduced their energy usage a week before, or even a day before uh, you get to a peak, wouldn't really make any difference um, to the to the security of supply. So that's that's why it. I, I know it looks like why it's obvious. Why don't you go out and tell everyone to uh, use less energy? I, we think that we've got a pretty um, we've got a diverse, strong supply, and in all the central scenarios, um, we're going to be fine. But we plan for everything and we want to get that, you know, I'm really grateful for you focusing on it today, to get those messages out to people. You talk about a diverse, strong supply. The UK is opening a new licensing round uh, for companies to explore oil and gas in the North Sea. Isn't that, that, though, at odds with the government's policy on net zero? Your climate minister, what do you think? No, absolutely not. I mean, what you have to remember is we, we're, we've led the world on reducing um, uh, emissions. We're the first major country to legislate for net zero. We have five-year carbon budgets. Uh, if you look at gas and oil, we, we will be burning gas, albeit a quarter of what we do today, in 2050 under our net zero um, programme. And what you'll also see is that UK gas has a much lower... Um, emissions uh, uh, package around it than does imported gas. So the more that we can produce ourselves, the lower will be our emissions for the amount of energy which we burn, which is strictly limited by the framework set by even the though, um, Climate Change Act. Even though the International um, inter Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC and the IEA, the um, International Energy Agency, both say there should be no new fossil fuel projects if we have a chance of meeting that one point. Well, we're, we're on a transition and, it, you know, it is, I think, you know, on the projections I've seen, we should be on around one to one um, uh, our investment at the moment. By 2030, it should be more, Mark Carney was saying yesterday, it should be four to one, but it's not four to zero. We, we, it's a transition, Anna, and we need oil and gas um, to, uh, you know, keep the lights on. We're, we're I mean, I think it's around 70% of our energy okay. needs in the UK are currently based on fossil fuel. Um, you've got to manage that transition, and it could be said that uh, getting and making sure that we have that orderly transition driven by investment in renewables, of which, of course, we're a world leader and, and all your viewers can be extremely proud, um, it's important that we get that balance right. And it's that balance which is okay. striking today. And, of course, by producing our own gas, we've got more jobs and we have more tax for the UK and we make ourselves left, less dependent on regimes, some of which spend the money to okay, buy missiles to threaten one, us One of with. your fellow ministers, Steve Baker, said the UK can't afford net zero pledges in the short term. So do you agree with that? Um, uh, we are committed to uh, net zero. It's a matter of law. Um, and uh, uh, of course we can. We're, we're, there are huge economic opportunities in net zero. You look at the jobs that have already come I, yeah, from offshore wind. Uh, we've now just uh, changed the rules around onshore. My job from the Prime Minister, when I, I said to her when she appointed me to this role, what do you want me to do? Accelerate, she said. Accelerate um, offshore wind. Let's shorten the time it takes to get a new um, uh, wind farm up. Let's make sure that we, you know, we do it right. But it can't be right that uh, the uh, length of the permissioning time from kind of starting a project of having it first turning its blades has gone up as much as it has. So we're across the piece. We're looking to accelerate it. I and mean, we've got nuclear, and there was an announcement from Jacob Rees-Mogg around fusion, which is phenomenal potential technology, and we're hoping to be the first country in the world to have uh, a prototype fusion plant, you know, putting energy okay. into the grid in 2040. Uh, why was King Charles advised by the government not to go to COP27? Uh, where King Charles decides to go, I think, is very much up to him. But was he advised by number I, 10 I, to go? I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm Even not, though you're I, climate minister, you don't 
I, 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 I don't know about that, but... Um, Would you like him to go? He's, a, he's worked in this field for, for I, I don't think Would it is. Like I don't think there? it's for ministers on, even on a, as esteemed a programme as yours, Anna, uh, to be a, uh, telling the uh, king what he should or shouldn't do. Um, but, I mean, the, his, his role, of course, from, moving from Prince of Wales to king has changed. And, um, you know, we... Uh, uh, I'm very much looking forward to attending Sharm, as I will be, as will uh, my Secretary of State and carrying on the great work that we did in COP26, because Alok Sharma, and it's worth uh, ending on a super positive of this interview, with just 30% of global GDP was covered by net zero um, pledges it, when he took up his presidency. It's now 90%. That's British leadership globally, and it's, uh, you know, I think we can be inordinately proud of it, and we'll be following up that work okay. at COP26 in Sharm. You say an end on, on a positive. I'm just going to bring one negative in, <laughs> I'm afraid. You wouldn't uh, be a journalist if you didn't. Former <laughs> Culture Secretary Nadine Doris uh, has accused the government of lurching to the right. Uh, she's warning your party, uh, facing a wipeout if, at the next election if you don't change course. What do you make of that? Well, I, I, you know, we've just done with this energy support package one of the biggest interventions by the state to help people we've ever seen. The commitment to net zero is there. I don't recognise... I mean, you know, I know how bruising it can be when you leave government. Um, and, uh, you know, I think what, what, I, what I did, and I would certainly advise Nadine too, the best thing to do is just to, you know, settle down a little while and, uh, and, and let the new team get on with the job, and that's what we're doing, and we're doing it in a way which is putting the long-term interests of the British people first and, in the meantime, is intervening uh, significantly to protect families and businesses across the country from what is a very troubled uh, global environment.